wedding venues. In this video today, we are talking about the six steps to becoming a brilliant Asian wedding venue. Now, we all know that the average budget for the UK wedding is approximately 21,000. But did you know that the average UK Asian wedding is more than double that at 50,000 pounds? So if you want to understand this market better and help them achieve their goals for their wedding, then stay tuned as we take you through those six steps. Now, if we haven't met before, I'm Kelly Mortimer and I'm a wedding venue consultant and trainer and I have been selling and planning weddings for the last 20 years, both in the UK and internationally. And I've worked for some of the leading names in hospitality, such as Claridge's, Rosewood and Mandarin Oriental. Now here with me today is another leading expert in her field and that's Latoya Patel of SW Events and she knows everything about hosting fantastic Asian wedding events. So Latoya, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about your experience and your background. Yes, of course. So at SW Events, we have been planning fabulous Asian weddings for the last six years. Fantastic. Um, and in that time, we have worked at places like the Grove Hotel in Hertfordshire, Lovely. Claridge's and the Victorian Albert Museum. Fantastic. And maybe you could just give us a little um, overview of what's happening in the Asian wedding market here in the UK at the moment. Yeah, so one of the key things that I'm seeing is that the trend in the number of guests seems to be on the decline. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, so we, uh, we're now hosting weddings for, for clients who have um, sort of 150 guests up oh. to about 400. Our average okay. is maybe around 300 guests. Well, that's interesting. I think venues will find that really interesting because they feel that they always need space for 700. And obviously with uh, the Asian weddings, there are pre-events as well. Is that always held in the same venue? Yeah, so the, the pre-wedding events typically are in a separate space okay. um, because it's quite nice with the number of events that you have to change up the venues that you're yes. using. And what sort of numbers do you see those pre-wedding events as? What size are those? So those, dep depending on whether the, the couples are hosting them jointly with both families involved, you can have them around 100 guests, up to maybe about 250 or so is, is our sort of average that we're seeing. Fantastic. So we're about to dive into those six steps of how you can become a fantastic Asian wedding venue. But just so you know, we will be including a link at the end of the video so that you can download a free checklist that Latoya and I have put together for you. There will be extra information in there. It's completely free and we'll be giving that to you at the end. But for now, let's dive in. So step number one is the kitchen. So talk to us about the kitchen, Latoya. Yeah, so this is a really important point. Um, a lot of Asian wedding couples um, would love to have that option to be able to have an external caterer come in. Okay. And that just gives them that specialism in the authenticity of the type of Absolutely. food that they're looking for. Uh, so to provide that opportunity is amazing. But equally, if you are a venue where you have um, an Indian chef mm -hmm. or you're able to provide fusion food, mm -hmm. that's also um, something that you should speak to your clients about and Great. potentially offer them a food tasting before they book, just to give them an opportunity oh. to experience it. That makes sense. So they could try before they book and then they have the confidence that you can deliver that that's cuisine. It. Or you offer them the option to bring in their own caterer. Yeah, that's exactly it. And, and just remember that the option to, uh, to cater it yourselves in-house could actually be something really different for them. Fantastic. Step number two is make friends with the Asian caterers. Yeah, so I can't stress how important this is because okay. actually the caterers are one of the very first suppliers that a couple will book. Wow, before the venue? So normally before the venue or exactly around the same time okay, as the venue, so just right up front with that mm -hmm. booking. Okay, and how would couples make contact with Asian caterers? Uh, so it's just through research okay. for the most part. So a as a couple, it may be that they're looking at people that have worked with their families before, but as a, as a wedding venue to find out who those caterers are, um, the best thing to do is just be doing a little bit of research online. Mm -hmm. um, and then potentially invite them down to come and see your space and give them a Great little idea. bit of a tour, show them the kitchen facilities, because yes. that's obviously important. Lovely. And just take it from there. And would you have some caterers that we could recommend to our venues? Yeah, absolutely. So let's. why don't we just go ahead and include those in that checklist. Um, so when you download the checklist, you'll see a few recommendations from us in there too. Brilliant. Step number three is a venue has to allow a ceremonial fire. So can you explain a little bit more about that for us? Yes, of course. So it sounds daunting to have <laughs> yes. a fire in your venue, but what we're talking about here is a very small self-contained 
ceremonial fire and okay. it's used as part of the ceremony so it's predominantly for the hindu wedding which is mm -hmm. a very very big market sure. um and it's it's very much under control so don't be scared <laughs> off by this concept and what can venues do to give themselves a little bit more comfort uh, so it's things like having a designated person mm -hmm. who is going to sort of check in on that ceremony mm -hmm. and make sure that everything's going okay and they're on hand with a fire extinguisher we have never had an op you know a situation where it would be required okay but it just gives you that little extra comfort fantastic step four for becoming a fantastic asian wedding venue is flow so what's all this about so this is to do with the fact that when an asian wedding couple is booking that venue there are multiple things that they might be looking to do in your space okay. so the fact that they've got the venue and they have a lot of different events that they're mm. trying to host um, it means that they're going to be moving guests from one space to another. Okay. So bearing in mind they'll have an Asian wedding ceremony for the most part and there may be a civil ceremony and there may right. be a reception and there may be a separate lunch to be able to have the opportunity to move people between spaces to enable that turnaround is ah, really important. Okay. So you don't necessarily have to have that amount of rooms as long as you can turn the space around. So it could exactly. be one or the other. Exactly. So it could even be moving people to the foyer part of mm -hmm. the building and then back into the ballroom or it could be that you have for the civil ceremony it might be slightly small so that may be in a different section of the venue oh, that makes sense. while you set up the major space and what about all these outfit changes we hear about for Asian weddings so th that's that's a real thing uh, <laughs> that does happen um, and so what's really lovely is to actually provide changing areas for their okay. guests because they're going to be on site all day it's not that they need bedrooms necessarily right, okay. it may be that you have um, syndicate rooms that you lovely. can provide so the, so men can change in one women can change in another or by family or whatever you would like to do but that's just a great option to have on hand sounds good step four is accommodation yeah so this is a really interesting topic and it's actually not just about the bride and the groom's okay. accommodation with an asian wedding there are a lot of guests who will want to stay over now that could be because they're having an early start and a okay. later finish mm -hmm. um it could be because there are people traveling more so from all over the country okay. and even internationally so they will need to potentially stay even the night before and the night of the that wedding makes sense um, and what we're also finding is that some of our couples are paying for some of those guest bedrooms for maybe a select number of their family and friends, particularly if they're flying in from abroad. Okay, so that's all packaged in when they book the venue, those extra bedrooms yeah, for the family. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's definitely worth discussing with the couples just to see if they do have any of those family members that they do wish to pay for accommodation for. Sounds good. Step six is creating your package. So Latoya, before we get into what to include in the package, what sort of days of the week are we looking at? So Fridays, Saturdays, and believe it or not, Sundays are actually Fantastic. quite popular with the Asian wedding market. And a lot of the times it's because they have multi-day events. So the Saturday may be the main day, but you still want to have something on the Friday and potentially something on the Sunday. Sounds good. So what sort of things should be in that dry hire package that we're offering? So if we think back to the catering topic mm -hmm. we talked about at the top, um, one of the things that is worth considering is the hire of your linen, your cutlery, your crockery, your glassware, and including mm -hmm. that in the dry hire package for the caterer. Um, and then the other thing that we've seen a couple of venues start doing is actually including portal service. Uh, yeah. And that works beautifully, especially if they're taking the cutlery, crockery, glassware from you. And it's honestly a godsend for the caterers. That makes sense. And what about accommodation? Do we need to include that in our package? Um, ideally, at least something mm -hmm. for the bride and groom. So okay. for the night of the wedding, but then think about the fact that the bride needs to get ready the yes. day before. So for her to do her hair and makeup on site is honestly such a help. So if you can, if it's not a bedroom, even including an extra space that she can use that has mirrors uh, for her to have her hair and makeup done. That sounds great. Well, amazing. So we've looked at six steps to helping you become a brilliant Asian wedding venue. Now, in case you miss any of that or you want even more information, Latoya and I have put together a superb checklist for you. I'm going to put the link in the comments box below. All you need to do is click that and that free checklist will be on its way to your inbox. Now, if you liked this video and you want to see more, make sure you hit the like button. Um, I'm Kelly Mortimer, wedding venue consultant and trainer, and I'm passionate about helping you and your venue have more success.